back in Soviet times and in modern Russia, on television, in media, everywhere we come across the gloomy depictions of life in the West. West is rotting, West is decaying, everything bad, poisonous, ugly comes from the West. And then there is a question. Why then the sons and daughters, wives and lovers of so many Russian elite, Russian politicians travel to the West, stay there? For example, Lavrov's daughter studies in the United States and England, Medvedev's son is a student of the Massachusetts University, Peskov's daughter chose friends, and even Putin's daughters and lover Alina Kabaeva also spends most of the time in a year outside in the West. Why do they suffer so much staying in the rotting West? Mystery wrapped in enigma, Churchill said about Soviet reality, and I think he was too kind. And one of the very characteristic features of Soviet reality and now modern Russian reality was to look for alien nations and enemies outside. Of course, they were always outside, never inside Soviet society or Russian society. And one of the concepts, ideological cliché closely connected with this idea, was the idea of rotting, rotten or decaying West. Western countries were always depicted as alien, dangerous and the ones that want to destroy Soviet Union or modern Russia. Because of jealousy, of course. Still, I don't know what causes this jealousy, but the belief that West is rotting and decaying came to active usage in Russian discourse back in 1841. And some people connected to Napoleon Wars and first close connection between Russian world and European world, and the gap that existed in culture, mentality and even domestic attitudes. But if we look deeper into Russian history, we will see that for more than 300 years Russia was occupied by the Tatar Mongols, just uh, until 1480. And during this period they were much influenced by Asian despotism. Mongol Tatars were among the ruling elite and lots of traditions were borrowed and continue until now. Because even if you look at today's Russia and their society, you will see that the majority of them agree that democracy and freedom are examples of weakness and authoritarian regime dictatorship is an example of strength. I think that's why every 50 years they choose, they nurture a new dictator. That might be an explanation and perhaps they feel closer to old Asian despotism tradition contrary to Western rebellions. And in Ukraine, all the revolutions that we had, democratic changes back in 2004 and Maidan revolution in 2014, were treated as something evil and always de depicted as a coup in Russian media. But it's nothing new, because when French Revolution happened and so many nations liberated themselves and it was a huge example for tremendous changes in the life of the global society, Russia also treated French Revolution as something extremely negative. So perhaps their negative attitude to democracy and freedom is one of the reasons why any positive changes that traditionally happen in the West are treated as a decay. Russian Orthodoxy, Eastern Orthodoxy, is another dimension that helps to separate modern Russia from the West. And the traditions of despotism, the connection, close connection of the church to the state, is something that was common back in the times of empire. So, when we look at the idea of this opposition to the West that was so popular back in Soviet times, we clearly see it today in the doctrine of Ruski Mir that is spread with the help of Russian Orthodox Church, KGB agent Kirill, and many Russians who believe this propaganda. And once again we see that Soviet myths are evolving in modern Russia. But when you look attentively at the ideas that were hidden behind the rotten West and opposition to it, according to this 
rotting West, decaying West cliché, life was depicted as very miserable for ordinary people in the Western countries and, of course, bright and prosperous for Soviets, who stood in queues, did not have passports until 70s, and many other examples of the poverty that was visible. But at the same time, the peak of this opposition to the West was reached perhaps during the times of the Cold War. And uh, very often this rotting West was associated with the United States that is one of the eternal enemies of Russia. Today, when we look at the Poles and Russians are asked what are their main enemies, you will definitely see the United States on the top and then Ukraine, Georgia and Baltic countries. I think we should take it as a compliment because the modern opposition of the Ruski Mir created by Putin is the West. And when we are treated as Westerners, of course, we are enemies to the Putin's regime. Another dimension that must be discussed, and it was visible back in the times of the Russian Empire and pretty obvious now, is Eastern Orthodoxy or Russian Orthodoxy. Patriarch Kirill, who is a real KGB agent, is one of the active prophets of the Ruski Mir Russian world, which is also built on the opposition to the Western values and Western civilization. State is closely connected to the church and church is very dependent on the state in Russia and intolerance and very vivid hierarchy is treated as an example of a normally working structure. Definitely another opposition to freedom and democracy. So what were the main dangers that could come from the West according to Soviet propaganda? Definitely foreign agents, undesirable organizations and various conspiracy theories. The problem is that the very same enemies are seen everywhere by Putin today. Foreign agents, they are everywhere, especially in Ukraine. Undesired organizations that can lead to democracy in Russia, which could be a tragedy. And the law, a specific law that controls but actually forbids the work of various non-governmental organizations, undesirable organizations, was passed back in 2015. And of course, various conspiracy theories like biolaboratories or NATO bases on the territory of Ukraine. Please let me know would you like to know more about various conspiracy theories that were born back in the USSR and now blossom in modern Putin's Russia. According to Soviet propaganda, according to Putin's propaganda, the United States and the West were constantly trying to ruin Soviet Union and they managed to do it with the help of genes, chewing gum and music. So maybe let us try and ruin Putin's regime with music too? One of the most stupid explanations that I have heard for this war of Putin in Ukraine is the fact that Russians want to save Ukrainians from the rotting, decaying West, not asking Ukrainians whether they want to be saved. And the price of this saving is extremely high. Thousands of Ukrainians dead just because they like the way people live in the United States or Europe more than people living in Siberia or the North Korea. The question is, why so many people speaking about rotting and decaying West in Russia choose moving in the westward directions? And if we analyze the waves of migrations, we will definitely see that more people choose civilized democratic countries contrary to Russia. I don't know what is the number of people who come from Europe or the United States to live in Russia, but the number of Russians who escape the country, escape Putin's regime and the gloomy reality of this Soviet country, still Soviet country, is definitely striking. My name is Anna and I'm a kind of dark anthropologist introducing you to the period of the Soviet Union and how it still poisons and changes the mentality of Russian people and makes neighbors like Ukraine, Moldova, Georgia suffer. But we will win and Soviet Union will never come back. <laughs>